Welcome to Blue by 90, your Michigan football podcast. We are three dudes who talk maize and blue. I'm Kalen, joined by Jack and Nate. Hey, what up? And we're here to go over Michigan's absolute dismantling of Indiana. Final score, what was it, guys? 39 14? 39 to 14. That was great. I was so happy to see that. I thought it was going to be a tough game. It looked kind of rough at halftime, but we ended up kind of running away with it in the second half. Uh, Jack, what was your kind of. Your kind of reaction to the game there? Um, it looks like Shea is back in the Heisman race. And then we can, uh, <laughs> that's, my, that's my hot take. Um, but no, I mean, Shea put balls on the money where they needed to be. It's great to see DPJ, Nico, Ronnie, um, Mike Samer still get, some, get a nice catch in there. Giles Jackson had a nice game. Yep. Um, I'm, just, I'm excited. We didn't have to rely on the run, you know, to put up points and get a bunch of yardage. Shea had another big game. Um, he has nine touchdown passes in the last two games, nine. Um, so I'm 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 pumped. I'm I'm excited to see. I'm gonna say that, but I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> I thought it was a great game. Great game offensively. Uh, defense. It looked a little shaky in the first half. I feel like Indiana was kind of just running around um, a little bit on on offense, kind of putting some points on the board, which made me a little bit nervous because we always play them close. Um, but overall, I was happy. Second half looked good. Um, it was great to see Shea have another good game, and yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, Nate, what is, uh, what's your thoughts yeah. here? Yeah, I'm with Jack, and I want to touch on a couple things that he talked about. was just the wide receiver core doing a fantastic job. Awesome. There were so many acrobatic catches in this game. Nico had a couple. DPJ with the insane catch in the end zone. That was awesome. Uh, Mike, Res- Mike Sainer stole Catching the opening over, drive. Yeah. yeah, like Leaving some room on the yeah. sidelines so you could throw the ball awesome. there. They're pushing great. the ball downfield, right? They just moved the ball downfield. The first drive, they had um, – Shea was – uh, kind of had one that was across the field to Haskins. They kept the um, drive going, yeah. right? <laughs> and to me, that was pretty impressive by Shea because beginning season, that's done. The play's done, right? Oh, yeah. Or it's a pick or it's, you know. It's a pick, yeah. They're, or a fumble, more like or, it. Or a fumble, yeah. <laughs> more comfortable in the pocket. The plays seem to be more downfield uh, passes. So I was really happy with that. And then the defense was a little shaky. I think it took them a little bit of some time to get going. But there was uh, a couple things like the first drive, I think the – very first pass that Indiana threw was to one of their like veteran wide receivers on Dax Hill, who was starting. Yeah, and then and it they was had a good the, ball. It was a good ball, yeah. Then they had the uh, the penalty, and so then by the time you knew it, they were already at the like they're already at the fifty yard line and just you know moving down the field. So right. Right. I think it did kind of take them a little bit of time to get acclimated. So, but I, I was so happy. Shea seems to be playing like the best ball that he's played. Um, super, just super confident and. Uh, the Indiana gave them a lot of pressure too, and they just he was able to stay in the pocket, stay comfortable, and make some throws, and they seemed yeah. to have more zip on it. I was reading something about how Shea has started to speed up his delivery motion, hmm. and it's and because it's not putting as much pressure on the line to provide a bunch of time for him, you know, uh, he's able to get the ball out quicker. And the other thing that I thought was great, he's spreading the ball out. He's hitting all of these different receivers, and then on top of that, dude, our guy Ronnie. Finally found the end zone. That is crazy to me. I didn't know that was only that was his first touchdown. That was season. unbelievable, right? Wow. Now he did have a couple drops. Oh, I mean, you know, I gotta gotta give him a little bit of criticism there, Ronnie. You gotta catch the ball, stuff like that. But hey, you scoring touchdowns, I'm gonna be clapping it up in the stands. <laughs> this was so. kind of weird. I want to touch on something there too. DPJ and Nico were like the top two wide receivers, which is what we thought was going to happen at the beginning of the season. This is like one of the first games where like those two guys were the top receivers. Right. And Ronnie, you know, he had a good game. He had a touchdown, a couple catches maybe. Yeah. I don't know, but it, it was really interesting. It just Well, it was funny was on DPJ's big uh, catch. It was, you said like, that's why he's a five-star. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it was kind Middle of like, of the game, yeah. It was kind of like, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, Nico finally kind of running away with it. 165 yards, three touchdowns, um, that long of 76. I don't know if anybody listened to that. Well, I was going to say, that looked like an Alabama RPO. <laughs> like, that's what you see. You see, you know, yeah. they you know do the run-pass option. They see the linebackers coming down, get it out quick, and then yeah. the guy just takes off. But, that's something I've wanted to see all year long, and 
It was beautiful. I don't know if anybody listened to that Inside the Trenches uh, podcast post game where they were interviewing Nico Collins after the game, and they were like, how far did that end zone look after he caught the ball? He's like, it looked pretty far. I was kind of tired, but uh, <laughs> glad to get in the end zone. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm just glad to see him, you know, really starting to use some of these weapons, right? I mean, you even see some of these, uh, you know, Haskins going out for pass and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, Dude, what do you think? I, I'm, I know that Jack had touched base on Haskins, Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was still not sold on him, but he really seems to be getting a lot better with his vision when he's running. He looks pretty good, and I'm really impressed with his improvement over the last like four weeks. He had a couple runs where it. you were like, dude, he should be down behind the line, and he just juked or did something, got two yards or something like that. So mm-hmm. I'm not mad about that. Uh, Jack, what do you think? Haskins? Um, Haskins, good. I mean, I think right now he's our number one. Um, I think after the past few games we've seen, he's kind of established himself as that. But Charbonnet got in as well. He had, I mean, we didn't, like I was saying, we didn't really run the ball a lot. Um, so we didn't see much in the game against Indiana. But I do want to get back to what you were kind of saying about Shea and speeding things up. Mm-hmm. So I went to Wolverine Brewing Company on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. And um, Devin Gardner and Michael Spath do like a show where they break down the film of the previous week. So they broke down. Uh, the Michigan State game. Okay. And a really cool thing, like, if you have a chance to go to it, go to it. It's awesome. Um, Devin Gardner was talking about Shea and something that you guys always talk about his happy feet and kind of rolls out of pocket before he needs to and, you know, balls aren't put where they need to be where they need to be at. Mm-hmm. Um, and one thing he was kind of saying is with what Shea's been doing is he's been progressing over the season with his drops and his timing with the receivers where mm-hmm. maybe one – um, route is supposed to be a five-step drop with, you know, for him, and then you know he's supposed to let go of it, and he's doing a three-step drop, and it's look, it's just the timing's not right, and it's not there. Right. Okay. Um, where it looked like this game, he was on point with those drops, his timing was good. Um, it the, it looks like he's just continuing to improve. Somebody was saying the Rudock effect earlier. Yeah. Where throughout the season, he's getting better and better. <laughs> Um, but it looks like Shea was really able to do that, and um, sorry, I just had to go back to that. And no. that. It's just crazy. Transfer <laughs> quarterback who has, starts off the season doing terrible as a senior, and then halfway through starts looking like a stud, right? Well, it's crazy. Dude, it's only been like two months. Two months ago, we were all going like, like this oh God, cut him a McCaffrey, yeah. Yeah. you know. Fire Jim. That, oh. that shit was happening. I didn't say that. I didn't Caleb say was telling me at the very end of the season, like, you think we should take Shea out? And I could tell it was like, Oh, he's like starting to go, like getting nervous if Shea gets hurt. You yeah, know? no, for real. Oh, yeah. He's like, you know. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't. With the way he's playing now, for yeah. sure. For real. But I mean, I just thought that was hilarious. I mean, <laughs> two months ago, we were trash. We called for his name. And so now it's like, dude, Jim is a good coach. In two yes. months, he's got this team like way better. So I think that's something to pay attention to. And also, Josh Gaddis's improvement. I know that he was talking a lot about. Oh, it's just about execution, but there's definitely been a difference in play calls. They seem to be throwing the ball a lot more, a oh, lot more hundred percent downfield passes. A lot more downfield passes. Uh, it feels like they're setting up the pass or they're setting up the run with the pass first, mm-hmm. and so I think Josh it, has been doing a good job. It feels right? It, it does. feels like we want to score points and we want to move the ball. And one of those one of those Nico Collins touchdowns was after um, a turnover. When we, I think we're on like the Indiana third, 20 or 30. Mm-hmm. And that was another thing in the breakdown um, that Devin Gardner did of Michigan State. I remember we had that turnover and we got the ball on the Sparty 20 or 30. And they came right, they just went right for the touchdown. Nico Collins over the middle, touchdown. Same exact thing happened against Indiana. Hmm. I called that play before it even happened. Cause <laughs> I remember what Devin Gardner said. He said, that's what you do. When you get the momentum, keep it going, go right for the end zone. They did it. And, and it worked. And it worked. And it worked. So. I mean, especially when Shea's putting those balls where they need to be and you know Nico Collins is going to come down with it, it's just, I'm just so satisfied. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we're, we're, seeing, we're seeing why Shea was a five-star. We're seeing why he was such a highly touted recruit. I mean, we gave him a lot of crap, but, I mean, obviously there was a lot of stuff behind the scenes that we weren't seeing. Oh, and for sure. now he's being put in a really good position where he can start to shine, and he's getting confident and comfortable, so I think it's all starting to coalesce and peaking at the right time. But the, the offense has really turned around, but do you want to move to the... Yeah, well, I was going to shift to the defense. Yeah. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out specifically on the defense was Dax Hill. Dude, Dax Hill ended up starting. He said they came to him on Wednesday and they said, Brad Hawkins got hurt in practice. You better be ready to go on Saturday. And he was like, I'm just going to prep like it's another day, blah, blah, blah. He came out. He was a leading tackler. 
Yeah, I saw it. Uh, holy crap, right? Leading tackler with an interception. I was like, yeah. man. That was pretty sweet. True yeah. freshman. He's, dude, this kid. And Don Brown is on record saying, like, he doesn't know any of the plays. They're just telling him what to do, and he's so fast that he gets it. He can just time. figure it out. So I'm like, just imagine if this kid actually <laughs> knew where he was supposed to be. This would be amazing. And not, not to get too far off track, but um, one thing I really noticed in that game is how many young guys were playing. Yeah. That is great. That's got to be great for recruiting, right? That's awesome. I mean, we had Giles Jackson, Sainra still was in there, um, Mayfield's on the O-line. Mm-hmm. We got Dax, who was, who was able to start because one guy got hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, that's got to be awesome for recruiting, especially for trying to get these high-caliber guys that are going to other programs, um, which I, I, I was just super excited to see that. That was really exciting. Uh, Nate, I'm sure you got something to say about Josh Uche. Oh my gosh, I was really nervous when he went down. I don't know what's with him. I don't know. He's okay. Pri- he's okay. I was say, I didn't hear any follow up on that. He was he running was... off the field, so he's fine. Yeah. Oh Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> we need him. Dude, I'm telling you that he's he's to me like him and Quiddy just have this dynamic. Yeah. Um, and those two guys on the defensive line with the stunts and whatnot, they're. They're doing such a great job. There's the Dax Hill interception where they just blew up the play, smashed the quarterback, and then Dan Dan- got his hand on, on the quarterback there. Yeah, yeah. Like it, there was something about he's just doing such a great job um, going up against the uh, offensive linemen that are bigger than him, and he's like really doing a great job of using his hands, like pushing up on them. Uh, he's really fast, right? We saw that in the Penn State game when he ran that guy down. Oh yeah. But he's I think going to be a key piece for them next week, and I was. Just so, I guess now I'm super reluctant reluctant to see that he's actually going to be playing. Because I think he's probably, you know, top three best players on the defense. He's great, yeah. I mean, I think another guy who kind of needs a bit of a shout-out is Don Brown. Because, I mean, Don has had a couple instances where the other team just kind of knows something, has a scheme. He, they get schemed up, and, um, you know, he can't seem to figure it out. Right, but I felt like in this game, like they were kind of doing some stuff, and they scored on us first. And Don Brown was able to just make those like mid-game, mid-quarter adjustments, so that we came out and we're like, no, 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 this isn't gonna happen all game, all quarter. Yeah, you know what I mean. And in years past, you know, Penn State, Ohio State, years past, they've just, you know, had their way with us. Yeah. And so I think he's really improved <clears throat> in that regard, which is promising. Um, it scared me because it was like watching the beginning. I was like. God damn it. Like, again, this is going to happen where we give uh, Ohio State the keys to the game just because Indiana comes out with some crazy game plan. It's going to be, right. and then, nope, shut them down. Just game's done. But another good thing, though, was the fact that Indiana was scoring on us a little bit. For the first time, I was kind of going like, our offense can hang in there, and I'm not scared. Yes. Right? You know we talked I mean? about it in the beginning of the season. Yeah. We, we, now we don't have to worry about, like, oh, wait, can our offense score to right. keep us in the game? Now it's just like, all right, we can we can do this. We can stay in the game. Like, defense lets up a couple touchdowns. We're okay, mm-hmm. which right. is a great feeling. Oh, yeah. It takes the pressure off, right? Um, do you want to talk about uh, – this is just random, random note. Okay. Somebody who had more tackles than you would think. Jess Spate had five tackles yesterday. <laughs> I heard his name get shouted out. I was like, "Holy shit!" I was like, "Oh my gosh, dude! Great for him, man." What What is he? What position does he? We know. I don't know, man. But he had five tackles. Just on special teams, or like that's what I'm like curious. I don't know. It was just cool. I saw that. I was like, "Oh, (laughs) just made it five tackles!" Like, wow, dude, that's awesome for him. I was pretty excited, you know. See a guy who has kind of stuck with the program. I think that kind of speaks a little bit to the coaching, right? Like, you have your brother transfer. You decide to just keep pushing through the program, and yeah. um, now he actually got to make some plays as a senior. That's kind of rewarding for anybody who's, you know, put all, that time, put all that time in, right? So yeah. Good for him. Yeah, that's good. I heard a little something about Will Hart had, a like, a not the greatest game. Did anybody hear about this at all? I I, I didn't. I'm, I don't. I mean, I like, saw he had a, he had a couple punts that. Um, I'm not like an expert on punters or anything. You know? I mean, there was there was definitely a couple punts that were short mm-hmm. compared. I mean, he's like Big Ten punter of the year last year. I think right. they they had him pretty much set to get it this year too. I had, it looks like a couple just like hit off his foot weird and they didn't go as far as normal. But I mean, well, I'm not worried yeah, about it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. like, I was like, whatever. Who like who's looking at the punter like that? Maybe he's got turf toe. Yeah. <laughs> when you when you win by like thirty points, you're not going like man that punter that punter sucked. <laughs> 
<laughs> or maybe that is a thing. When you're up by that many, you start trying to nitpick yeah, at things that could have been improved. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, man. No, overall, I mean, I don't know if anybody has any other thoughts on the game specifically. I thought, you know, our offense was rolling, our defense. We got down early, but we picked it up and just, what did they say? We didn't allow a touchdown for 44 minutes or something like that. That's awesome. That's, that's amazing. So, I mean, other than that, we're just looking on the horizon to uh, the big foe coming over. Yeah, the game. The game. That's correct. Um I, I honestly don't have anything more to say. No, I'm, I'm no, just happy. I'm just pleased. Yeah, I'm just pleased. <laughs> I'm, I'm good at bitching, but <laughs> like, we don't, don't have much to bitch about, so I'm happy. Yeah, I can like actually eat like my turkey dinner this this week and yeah, go like exactly. do not have to be have this like angst in my mind. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna sleep like a baby after my turkey and mashed potatoes. Eat your Thanksgiving dinner. What do we got? Look at the top ten. Yeah, I want to kind of look up some of the rankings here. I got. The top ten written down. AP top ten. AP top ten. Don't have CFP yet. Yeah, college football playoff top ten will be out, what? Tuesday. Tuesday? Tuesday night. Okay, so AP, we got number one, LSU. Number two, Ohio State. Um, Guys, we're going to do an extra Ohio State episode, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, we'll preview that. um, So people just keep keep an eye out for that. Um, We'll have that out later in the week, a little shortly before the game. Okay, great. A couple days for a game, probably. And then uh, number three is Clemson. Uh, number four is Georgia. I think that's dumb. Well, like, they're gonna they'll Georgia. be out because they're gonna lose to LSU in the Silly. SEC title game. Yeah. So that's another way for Bama to get in. Dude, that so. that pissed me off, dude. Like that's just literally them going like, let's put in two SEC teams. Let's just totally devise well, it's it. Gonna happen unless Auburn can beat Bama. There's gonna be two SEC teams in because either way, Georgia wins. They're gonna be in and out. I mean, but also Georgia wins. Then LSU could also remain in. I think they will. I, I think yeah. I don't think there's any way right now, as long as it's LSU devised, goes undefeated in the regular season, that they'll be in. It's pretty much devised yeah. for that to happen. Yeah, <laughs> they're like, they're pretty yeah. much making it so that it's going to be either LSU, LSU Alabama, Alabama again in a rematch. Yeah. Right, because yeah. they're just like, oh, this game will get tons of ratings. Yeah. Let's just totally mess yeah. with it. So we need Auburn to win. Yeah. <laughs> Go Auburn. Yeah. <laughs> and meanwhile, the same people who are going like, you know, uh, the integrity of the game is. You know, we can't have these players, you know, actually make money. Then they're just going like, oh, the integrity of the game, let's, you know, we got to keep it so that we can get these ratings and, you know, people stay in tune. It's, yeah. It's, it's such it's such BS, dude. That pissed BS. me off. Well, and then, okay, what did I say? No, number four, Georgia. Number five, Bama. <laughs> number six is Utah. Sliding under the radar a little bit here. Utah has one loss. I think that, I mean, it'll be so tough for them to get in the playoff now because they it needed is. Oregon to beat. Arizona State to make that a top ten matchup okay. when they play yeah. to like help their resume. Their, so their that, loss was to USC, which is not. I mean, it looks whatever. They're ranked. They're twenty five. Ranked. Or something. Yeah, it's not an awful loss. No, uh, but I mean, I think that says more about that program and that coach. I don't know who the coach is at Utah, but like, he's obviously doing a great job. They're also in the Pac twelve. They are in the Pac twelve. <laughs> hey, you could be in the ACC, right? It could yeah. be. Could be. <laughs> So, I mean, so, we'll, we'll see what happens with Utah. I don't know. It'll, no. be, it'll be tough for them to get in. Well, now we got Oklahoma. Oklahoma's Maybe in a strange spot, spot. I, think, I feel like. What do you guys think? They're well, done. I, if I, I would not put them in. Did they're going to just get, barely beat TCU? Yeah, but they're going to get a rematch against Baylor in the uh, uh, Baylor stomps. That championship game. And Baylor's going to be, you know, a top 15 team, right? right? And so if they beat them twice, that'll be multiple top what top twenty mm-hmm. wins uh, against the same team, but right. still, that, I mean that says something, right? I don't think Oklahoma has a shot. You don't think yeah, they have a shot? I don't I think, think they have a shot at getting in. I think they're okay. they're just over with. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I think yeah. Bama wins. They'll get in. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Well then, uh, number eight is Florida. I hate Florida. I don't know why Florida's ranked that high. To be honest, <laughs> they have two losses. Now their two losses are to Georgia and. Um, LSU. LSU. So. Two good teams. Yeah, it is what it is. It just seems but to just me because. like they're they're just planning that game. It's like our annual bowl game against Florida. Yeah. I'm looking at it, I'm like, we'll have three losses, most likely. They'll have two losses. Oh, let's see a matchup, blah, blah. And then God, they'll so have Georgia that. play like, you know, Wisconsin or Minnesota because they'll be in the Big Ten championship game. It's just yeah. like... I'm, I'm telling you, we're going to play Florida again. Well, God, number nine is Minnesota, and 
I think Minnesota will go to the Rose Bowl. Right? Minnesota still has a chance to make the playoff. They still, they still have a very. They still control their own destiny. They can beat Ohio State in the championship because they have. They have to beat Wisconsin, which will be a good ranked win, and then they will have to beat that Ohio would, State in the Big Ten championship. That would be bizarre, they get it. though. They lost to Iowa. Who? But it was a road win. It was a road game loss at to Iowa. Iowa at Iowa, and it was a close game. It was a close game. It's not. And it's, it's not, not like one a, loss team. Yeah, that's true. I mean, they can, if they beat Wisconsin and Ohio State, they're in the playoffs. They beat Penn State pretty good, and Penn State <clears> played <throat> Ohio State like tough, tougher tough than most. Yeah, you know, I think. So I mean, I think they have a good argument to get in if they do win out. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. You guys should. I think they'll get hammered if they were to get in the playoff. You sold me. Okay. Go PJ Fleck, I guess. And then at number ten. Number ten is your boys in blue here. Shades back in the Heisman race. (laughs) There's always an opportunity to make it into the playoff. We need something crazy to happen, but it's it's possible. There is (laughs) a small chance that they could get into the playoff. Yeah. Alabama would have to lose. <laughs> we need everybody Wisconsin to lose. Wisconsin would have to win, then lose, and get absolutely demolished by Ohio State. Yeah. We would have to beat, beat Ohio, Ohio State. State, and then Penn Clemson. State would have to lose next week. Clemson just to needs Rutgers to lose. Or whatever. Clemson needs to yeah. lose out. <laughs> Bama needs to lose. Yeah. And we have so. I mean, there's so many different things that we it, it would be like the the craziest week. The craziest week in college, football. college football yeah. history for Michigan to get in. <laughs> but it could happen. But yeah. I would say that if they had beaten Penn State, like they could have still oh. and oh. made the game close against Wisconsin at early in the season, they would have a shot. Well, yeah, because we'd still have a shot at the Big Ten championship game. Yeah. Because then it would be, we beat Ohio State, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so um, it would be a very similar situation to last year. Well, and just for fun, number 12 and number 13 are Penn State and Wisconsin, respectively. Uh Two teams that we lost to are yeah. now ranked below us. Yeah. <laughs> I think I, I do think it's valid that we are ranked against ahead of Penn State because I think if we played again, we beat them. Wisconsin, they beat us down pretty bad. Yeah. But again, I think it would be a much better game if we played yes. them at this time of the year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I feel like they've kind of started to fall off the rails a little bit. Where our trajectory is very much Nothing changed but up. than what we've yeah. we've seen normally. Normally we almost trend downwards t- at the end. I was looking now at the TV upwards. right here and they just did an advertisement for the game. Oh, yeah. So we're all ready. It is nice to see that we are trending upward upward upwards at the end of the season, which is a first. It's a first. Yeah. I can't remember last time I felt this good at the end of November about Michigan well, football. Last year. <laughs> And I remember crying. At well, I after we lost to Ohio State. I've purposely <laughs> forgotten about that. Thanks for bringing it back up. Who, who would you like to see Michigan play in a bowl game? Uh, an SEC team for sure. That's not Florida. What do you What do you think? Or like Oklahoma? Or what something? if they played like I want Auburn? To see a big name. Yeah, just a big name. Big name school. Right. Auburn, Oklahoma, um, Georgia. Well, I think what they really want is they want that Oklahoma Bama match. I mean, I'd love to see that too. So, but I say any big name story school. Yeah. You know, okay. Other than Florida, I, I don't want to see that. Yeah. yeah, they definitely have a, a whoever's doing the the scheduling, the guys in the committee. They have it either set up for a matchup where it's like okay, Jalen versus Alabama if they decide not to go, or if Alabama does get in, which I feel like it's gonna happen, they're gonna yeah. then have uh, like a big matchup there. So either way, it's like a win-win scenario for what the scheduling. What do you guys think if we played like Baylor? I'd be down for that. They would be. That's a fun. I mean, you know, if they lost to Oklahoma, they would be like you know eleven and two or something like that. That'd be a fun game for me to watch. I think. Dude, I'd be down to play Oregon too. Yeah. Yeah. But that most likely will end up with the loser of the Big Ten championship game going and playing in the Rose Bowl. Yeah. Right. Oh. Right. Yeah. But if Utah, eh, if we Utah wins, playing, yeah, you know, hmm. we could end up playing, you know, Oregon. I mean, Oregon or Utah is another option, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I honestly looking at the kind of the rankings and the landscape. I'm looking at us playing Florida again, or Baylor or Oregon. I'm cool with Baylor, or Oregon. Yeah. If we play Florida, not Florida. Not if we Florida. play Florida again, I'm just gonna. I'm just so annoyed. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna you know send a strongly it. worded letter. <laughs> God dang you, CFB yeah. playoff committee. Yeah. You know what was a weird thing? Uh, yesterday they mentioned for the Indiana team, like 25% of their roster was from Florida. Yeah. yeah. Which is got, why they wanted to play in a... They said uh, that, whatever the heck that guy's name is, um, is like has a 
recruiting tie to Florida. He's the coach high school. In Florida Dude, that or one guy on the team, his cousin was Lamar Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, how is that guy not just like amazing? If he's just been practicing, <laughs> Lamar Jackson. He's a monster. MVP in the NFL. Let's go. Unreal. Love seeing him play. Yeah. All right. Well, that's kind of all I got. Um, just looking forward to next week. Like Jack said, um, look out later in the week for our Ohio State look ahead episode. Um, guys, you got anything else? Go blue. No, go blue. Go blue.